is all a lot here. I've been busy with the G clamp and a bit of chainsaw milled cedar. And the jigsaw that I bought mm, a bit over 30 years ago because I bought that to bake, make the baby's cradle for my son who turns 30 next month. So I've had it for 30 years and I've just been using it to remove everything that's not got any chance of being in the finished propeller from the four laminae which will go into the laminated rough blank from which the propeller will be carved. And on yesterday's video I had a question from Mike Flight up in Scotland asking if it wouldn't be possible to carve a propeller from one single rectangular prism of timber or as he asked would it interfere with the balance well the answer is yes it will interfere with the balance but also when you've got two or four or six or eight pieces of wood laminated together you've got horizontal glue lines which become apparent when you carve away the unwanted portion of the sawn laminate once the whole thing's put together. Considering that at least half of this has to be carved away, I reckon you'd have three times more work if you were to just start with a solid rectangular prism and carve away until you get to the the inner aerofoil which is lurking within. Um, doing it this way you've got the glue lines available as contour lines so making a one-off propeller you don't have to make blade station aerofoil section templates for the top and bottom of each blade in order to make sure that the two blades are equally thick and have identical profiles because this way you can see this is where the join line is and it's this far away from the edge and it's this far away from the edge and that's this far away from the hub and okay I need to carve a little bit more on this blade in order to get it equal to the other one and that way there's no argument and you don't need to make templates. Templates are really only useful if you're doing some sort of a production mark and you want to make several copies of the same propeller. This isn't like that. What I'm trying to do is make identical diameter pitch blade plan forms with different aerofoil sections. As I said to Mike Flight in my answer to his comment, when I was a teenager, the first three propellers I carved were carved from solid blocks. The first one, it was a solid block. The second and the third one, I understood that you had to laminate them. I didn't understand that you had to balance the laminations, but I was too scared to plot the blade station sections onto the stations on the laminate and cut it up like this before gluing it together. So I glued the planks together into one great big beam and then I spent weeks hacking away at the beam with my grandfather's draw knife and rasps. And yeah, I did finish up with a propeller shaped object in the end. You couldn't ever have flown with it. But 
but it sort of amused me. Kept me occupied on the school holidays anyway. Just a little bit deep there. As I also said to, to Mike, the more work you put in at this stage, bring in your laminate right down to the line before gluing them together then the less work you have to do to achieve the same aerofoil and get it to balance it's just like taking the time to balance the planks before you decide which end of them is going to be in which blade tip The actual carving is probably the quote sexy part. But this is the bit where it matters. So I'll just keep going with that. Right. Five minutes with the file. Has got them all cleaned up. Now for the next stage in the obsessive compulsive process. Now, We transcribe the markings from the front face over to the side faces. And that way, when it comes time to line everything up, in the gluing process, we have more cues regarding what goes where. And of course, if you're running a factory and you're manufacturing air screws for a contract then all of this is unnecessary because they have templates. They don't have templates. I'm not making the same air screw over and over and over again. I'm making a different air screw every time. And if somebody's setting themselves up as a bespoke propeller carver, serving the light general aviation and ultralight market, and there are people who do that, every time they make a propeller they've never made before, they don't charge the customer for the process of doing all the design work and carving the first one and they stick the first one onto their copying machine and the one they sell the customer is the copy and the one they keep is the one that's waiting there for next time a customer 
wants the same propeller and they have racks of them. And when they haven't got any actual orders coming in, they basically saw and laminate blanks for the most popular propellers that they expect to get orders for. Back in about 1993, at Inglewood, I met a bloke called Richard Sweetapple. He's the only person other than me that I know of, you know, that I've met and talked to, who's flown behind a propeller that he designed and carved. He made the, I think they were 12 foot diameter wooden propellers for the Vickers Vimy replica, which flew the Atlantic. And uh, four bladed. 12 foot diameter, laminated from Tasmanian oak. He offered me an apprenticeship as a propeller carver, but I would have had to leave me kids with my wife at Red Range and go and live in Toowoomba on apprentices' wages. And that was not appealing. So therefore, I'm just an eager amateur. But, I sort of know where to start and how to proceed. And when it's all said and done, it's not the aeroplane propeller that exploded. It was a wind turbine. And on that, here's a piece of pedantry for you. Wind turbine rotors and aeroplane propellers are both air screws. But one is a propel or, so it's common to spell it E-R, but you have a propel oar and you have a rotor. And they are both air screws. Oh, that can be seen. So yeah, another five minutes. Marking the blanks. So there we go. And that's the other way up. It's not magic. You just have to know where to begin. And it helps if you know what looks right. And every time you have a go, you get closer and closer. But anyway, this is why we laminate. In order to balance the mass and the density of the wood at the tips, and in order to save oneself the time of having to carve all this stuff away and reduce it to sawdust. At least like this it can be fire lighters, although I have a potential use for it within the scheme. Because I do have a bit of a scheme in mind for this project. Warbles on a lot to YouTube. Because you never ever know when you're going to need to know how to laminate and carve a wooden propeller. Ciao.